and welcome to the third mukbang I'm using today. We have da -da 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 -da, poke. So yeah, last one was one ton. I think the past two have been noodles. So this time we're gonna go Hawaiian. So this is actually from Ahi Poke. Uh, it's not my favorite place in London. My favorite one is from a place called Island Poke, but they don't deliver uh, from central London to here. So. This is what I've got instead. So I'm gonna talk you through the bowl very quickly. We have some salmon with some spicy mayo sauce, some cabbage, kimchi, cucumber, uh, smashed avocado, coriander, what else did I put in here? Edamame beans, a bunch of stuff. Hmm, yes. So very excited and it's on a base of quinoa, I also ordered some kombucha, which is one of my favorite drinks and it's very hard to get hold of in London. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to go on a bit of a health kick. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for a little while. Um, but today's topic is going to talk about the question, where do you really come from and where, or slash, where do you originally come from? Which I get asked a lot, so apart from Okay, so there's two questions that I always, always get asked, especially when I'm traveling. Number one is how do you eat so much and stay so little? I'm definitely not little. I think I just dress in a way that people don't think I've put on as much weight as I actually have. I've definitely put on a lot of weight recently, but I've also had a great time putting it on. So it's not really bothered me. I'm just trying to do a bit more exercise when I have time. Um, and the second question I get a lot is, um, where do you come from? Um, so I just kind of wanted this to be an open discussion um, on whether you get the same question um, or and how you deal with it basically. But before that, I'm going to just mix it all up and then eat it. So I've got some quinoa and some kimchi cucumber that just dropped. Mm, so good. Poke okay, is one of those things I can happily have every single day and be happy. Mm. I love onions, but you know when onions, when you eat a certain amount and it makes your nose kind of breathe through like a dragon? I like onions when it's like that. So usually when someone asks me, which is probably the number one question I get whenever I travel or I'm in a taxi or meeting people generally, they always go, where'd you come from? Or where are you from? And then I'll say, London. Um, and then some people get quite frustrated and they go, no, where, where do you really come from? So then I'll go, okay, so I grew up near Brighton. That's when I'm feeling trolly. Um, and then when they, <laughs> third time, it goes either, where do you really, really come from? Or where do your parents come from? Or where are your origins? To which I say, um, Chinese. Um, and Okay, so recently I experienced a thing on a taxi <laughs> a taxi journey with a guy who asked all three questions. And then when I said I was Chinese, he then proceeded to go, no, you're not. And um, I was like, pretty sure the last time I checked, I am Chinese. And they're like, no, you're not Chinese. No, I've seen a lot of Chinese people and they don't look like you. He then proceeded to carry on and was like, nope, you're not Chinese. Like, I think you're Latino. And I'm like, definitely not Latino, like, come on, look at me. Like, look at me, look at my eyes, I'm not Latino. Um, but he just wouldn't take no for an answer and he just argued the whole way, just say, no, you're not Chinese, I know it. I'm like, okay, well, I'm really glad you uh, managed to delve into my genetic pool and decide that for me. Um, but it does get a bit frustrating when they finally ask you three times, like, where do you really, really come from? And then when you do tell them, um, they then come back with that and just basically say you're a liar. So yeah, I'm just kind of wondering like how, if you've experienced this, how do you feel? Because I did post, I think I talked about it briefly in my struggles being British born Chinese video, which I uploaded last year. And it, I really love the response to that, to that video because so many people have shared their own personal experiences and I, that's exactly what I wanted it to be about. I wanted it to be a discussion. I wanted it for people to feel like they're not the only person, like only people experiencing that um, and those questions and things and feel alone in if they don't look the way they're supposed to look. Um, so yeah, I kind of want to open it up to you and have this as a discussion forum again of how do you usually feel when people ask you that? Or does it bother you? Um, and how do you normally answer back? So when I was younger, I used to be really, really bothered by it um, because I had the insecurities of not looking Chinese. So when I constantly had people telling me that I didn't look like it, but they're asking me to tell me that I don't look like it, it used to really make me get upset. 
but now that I am older, like I really like the way that I look now, like I really embrace it, I love that I look different, so it doesn't bother me anymore and I know that the harm, well most people are coming from a very very harmless place, like they don't mean anything malicious by it. Most people are really really nice about it and it's just, you know, it's just a conversation starter for them I guess and a way to get to know people. But I have asked other friends who are Caucasian and they were like, never had that before, <laughs> like very very rarely would someone be like, no like, where do you really come from apart from England? They don't get the same kind of treatment. So it is really interesting that certain um, ethnic backgrounds get different questions uh, for people. I wonder what the equivalent of that is for someone else. Like, would you have a breakfast? What did you really have for breakfast? No, but like, what did you really, really have for breakfast? I don't know. Mm. It depends on my mood if, uh, if they're, being really rude about it then that's usually when I bring out the London Brighton bit because I know what they're trying to get at um, but if they I know they're just being polite and they're just kind of being really nice about it then I'm like oh well I also don't want to say my parents are Chinese because that's kind of insinuating that I'm not and I am so I usually just say oh, I'm Chinese but I was like born and bred in London but I am Chinese because that's something I'm very proud of as well. And I am actually interested in potentially getting one of those ancestry DNA things, tests done and see, um, I get a lot darker in summer. Like even now, I'm pretty tan because I've been away quite a lot recently, but I'm still not as dark as I usually am around this time of year. Um, but it's strange because if, my sisters and I were to all go together to the same place the same amount of time, they never tan, like, ever. Like, I think they, well, they tan, like, a little, little bit, but I will be in the sun for, like, five minutes and have a tan line, so I have to be really careful what I wear because I just have disastrous tan lines. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to think, like, what I would want somebody to say to me for it not to come across as being a bit rude about it. Um, so, yeah, I can't open this bottle. But I do find it quite funny when somebody proceeds to tell me that I'm not what I say I am. So, don't feel bad for not like, looking how you should look because that's the beauty of how we are, that we are also unique to each other. Um, and I think there is like an education there and I do hope in for future generations and in future years to come that society will change in a way that you won't stigmatize somebody for not looking what the genetic, for, you know, faulting the genetic makeup for not molding themselves as what you're stereotypically meant to look like. But I think the conversation is there and I've seen a lot more um, in the media about things like that and that topic particularly so I do hope we're in a place uh, where we want to be discussing this where we want to lift each other up and we are teaching others about it and um, thinking of ways where people can learn about it without offending others because I think there's a really tactful way of talking about certain things and I think sometimes there's so much anger in the world which I get but it then means that when it comes to people who may want to be educated about something, they may be scared to approach a subject because then they're not sure how the other people are going to react. And it shouldn't have to be an angry negative place. It should be a place where people are just making good progressive conversation. And I think we are collectively doing that now. So that is good. I will cheers to that with kombucha. Yeah, and also on another note, I just wanted to thank everybody for all of your wonderful feedback in the first video about future plans and um, why you subscribe to the channel and what videos you'd like to see more. I've marked them all down um, and I am going to be focusing a lot more on London content, lifestyle content, food um, and also more videos about being freelance and working and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's just it's really cool that we're all in the same mindset and we're all on the same page about everything and that makes me happy because that's the direction where I want to take the channel and it's just made me very happy that you guys feel the same and you want to see the videos that I want to actually be making. So, yeah. Hmm. It's been a super exciting year so far and we're only halfway there. Um, and when I try to plan for the future, I used to always plan a year ahead, years ahead and have all the milestones I want to achieve. 
and then I then I'd get really overwhelmed by it and that used, used to bring a lot of anxiety so now in the past few years I've started to look at life in more six month intervals because I think six months is a long enough period for you to really get into a new habit and for you to try out new things and take the time to harness that skill or to try give something a good go but it's also not too long of time that you feel like you have invested too much energy um, and time or money on it uh, and it also it's a way of elevating any anxiety and stress from th thinking I need to make this work for a year to two years, otherwise I've bombed. I'm sure with anything that fails, there's a lot more to be learnt than when things go smoothly. So yeah, that's kind of been my mindset for the past few years and so far it's been very good and I am way less stressed than when I was in my early 20s and now I'm at a time of my life where I do want to just try out new things and to um, see what I learn from that and yeah, so this year has been, the first six months have been focused on the whole, can I really do the freelancing thing? Can I do videos and stuff creatively full time? First six months of the year has been super good, super busy, and loads of little opportunities. Um, and now it's kind of slowing back down because everything was back to back. And now I'm kind of not letting myself panic too much about having every single thing lined up for the, the next six months but more just going with the flow taking the time now to focus on myself um, to start you know building up the business or well, continuing projects taking on new things and then just see where that takes me as well um, and in the meantime I just feel like I've been so focused on work um, and it's still like my number one thing that I want to focus on uh, in the next six months but I just kind of haven't taken care of myself and my well-being and that's also a forever important thing because I can keep working and keep working but if it's at the expense of my health and well-being which it has been then that's just gonna be bad at the end of the day and it's not good for you physically or mentally um so yeah I've been trying to do that more um Ellie and I literally just signed up for class pass and we've booked our first um reformer pilates class on monday so we're going to be doing that a lot more together and then just spurring each other on um by when we meet up to actually do a f like really fun exercise classes and then obviously go and eat afterwards um so yeah i'm really looking forward to that and then i also met up with laura which i'm sure a lot of you have known let's know about laura bubble and we had a really really good like really really good dinner yesterday and had tapas and chatted about I think we've just all reached the point of our lives now where we want to do less things that are bad for us and more things that are going to help us grow as people and be around people that are going to bring up the best in you and make you want to strive and be the best version of yourself and I'm just so so grateful to have friends like that like I feel like recently I've just been you know in such a good place with my social circle um, and I'm just very very grateful for people that I know have my back and have you know my best interests at heart and I have absolutely their best interests at heart and we just have really really good conversations that help us all want to grow to become better people in both personal business um, socially like so many aspects of life and I think it's so important to surround yourself with people like that and yeah I just reached that good point really really sweet spot now um, where I'm going out and doing stuff, I feel productive, I feel motivated and I feel like I can also have people to turn to when things aren't as good and I don't have to put on a brave face um, and pretend everything is like sunshine and rainbows when it definitely isn't um, and I have like a good group of people now I can just go I'm just having a bit of a, a whirlwind day and they can sit me down, get me a poke bowl or some dim sum and then just chat it out <laughs> so yeah that's good and I'm looking forward to our reformer pilates class um, also realised that this has gone on a tangent from the t title, but um, yeah, L let's just go with it. And also there are like, I think it's like a really sticky day in London today because I just keep seeing flies everywhere. And one of them is circling above my poke bowl right now. I see you. Circling around looking at my tuna. No, I don't have tuna. Salmon. Mmm. And I also need to hurry up because um, my eyebrows are like Hagrid's secret caterpillar pets right now. So, I booked an eyebrow wax for 3.45 and I think, I'm gonna check the time actually. It's 3.25 so I'm gonna have to wrap up this video now. 
um, and quickly finish this and then head over to get these caterpillars turned into more shapely twigs. Yes, but um, I hope you enjoyed this milk bowl I'm using today with a poke bowl. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up so I know to film more of these kind of things and to talk to you more about my personal thoughts on various subjects and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe for more lifestyle food and travel content and if you are a subscriber and you've come back then thank you so much for coming back to watch this video i really really appreciate it um, but i hope you're having a wonderful morning afternoon or evening and i shall see you very very soon i've basically finished it now um, but yes i shall see you in the next video eh. goodbye